Welcome to Marshallpreneur TV. We've got another episode for you. We've got Ken Byrne from Golden Tiger Academy in Ireland. And uh, hey. that's correct, is it, Ken? Yes, it is. Yes, yeah, so I got it right. <laughs> <Thanks, God. laughs> um, and I just uh, wanted to uh, get Ken on the show for an interview um, because I think I think I might well, I've wanted to pick Ken's brains for a while, and uh, he sounds like he's doing some right things, and I think it would be. Um, beneficial to uh, a lot of us to, to find out a bit about what Ken's doing and uh, how he's uh, making a successful full-time business um, through teaching his classes. So uh, without further ado, hello Ken. Hey Scott, how are you doing? Yeah, good man, good. Um, I'll just start off with the easy ones, uh, like we were doing earlier, just introduce yourself, just give us a bit of background on uh, who you are, what you do, where you're yeah. teaching. okay. Well, I'm uh, the founder of Golden Tiger Academy. Um, we're a full-time martial arts group. Uh, we've got like 150 students. We've been full-time now for four years. Uh, we're growing steadily. We are in a new premises now this past year. It's great. Plenty of space. And we're kind of a community-based group where we work with the, with the community, with the police, with the schools. So it's, we're, we're on a local level. We, we work rather than kind of, you know, advertising to like other counties and stuff. Right. We basically, you know, work on a local level, and that's where we get most of our business from. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you concentrate on that local area. So you said you yeah. said there, um, it's at Golden Tiger. Um, what, yeah. What sort of things do you offer at, at Golden Tiger? What's your background well, as a martial we, artist? Well, my, my my background originally I started martial arts back in '86, which is a long time ago. Yeah. Um, that you know, the usual stuff with karate and some taekwondo, kickboxing, the usual martial arts that we all kind of would have all done over the years, you know. Yeah. Um, currently now I'm teaching Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. Um, uh, I have one of your fellow guys over in London, Simon Yo, he, he trains under Hodge Gracie, he's my instructor. Okay. And um, I'm teaching, of course, Raw Combat. Absolutely. For the Ireland branch, yeah. And I teach a couple of Korean martial arts as well. Fantastic. Oh, so you got you got yeah. plenty you got plenty to keep yourself busy there. Yeah, a lot, a lot. <laughs> There's always something to be doing. So yeah. um, you, you touched on it, you said you introduced yourself. But you had uh, around 150 students, is it? You have at your classes yeah. at the moment, and uh, and you sort of that's mainly based locally, and you don't really look for the the sort of large scale. You just focus on the local community. Um, I know we've had. Yeah, a, I found I found that yeah to be yeah. much better. So that's found, you found that easier sort of. Focusing down on a, on a smaller group rather than going for a, a, a larger group. Yeah. yeah, I found well over the years I've tried to branch out, you know, to other counties and other towns and stuff like that. But they all have their own little groups going, you know. Yeah. Whether they be small part time clubs or the odd, you know, uh, you might have the odd kind of full time place. Right. But people tend to stick with their own communities. I find so if you get behind your community and help them and you know, offer kind of free seminars and, you know, bullyproofing courses and, you know, sure. work with the police or the schools. They tend to get to know you and right. uh, you get a lot of loyalty then from your local community and you really don't need to branch out. Right. And, you know, because at the end of the day, if you can work on a local level, you're going to help the community and then in turn, they're going to help your business and sure. support you. So. Right. I'm sorry there, Kim, my, my boy's hey, kicking uh, off in the background, you can probably hear him. <laughs> I'll just yeah. go check him out and see if he's all right, and I'll, we'll, we'll pick that back up there, man. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. All right, Kim, that was just a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> you work just, your magic. Everything that could have gone wrong then just did. He just, he just had a massive poo. He just went everywhere. <laughs> That's why like, I come to the academy to do this. <laughs> yeah, mate. It, it was just a... a I completely slipped my nose. His uh, nan was supposed to be having him, so uh, she couldn't do it at the last minute. So I was like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Well, back in the game now for the next 10 minutes, anyway. And <laughs> <Yeah>, no problem. <laughs> so, um, where do we leave off? So, we we're just talking about, yeah, just sort of uh, just focusing on local um, students rather than sort of far and wide and how that's what worked out for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, it just seems to be the way to go to kind of establish the base. Um, because, as I was saying, when you get in with your local community, they're always there. They always know you're there. They always come and look for you when they need you. Uh, you know, it's like the schools, they contact me every year to do like intercultural day. Yeah. So, 
yeah, Intercultural Day is like one of the biggest events of the year in, in each school. It's, it's like, uh, it's fantastic. Like, and they, they want the martial arts in there, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, and um, we've been doing it like four years on the, on, on the run. Yeah. Uh, and we could get through maybe a thousand students in two days, like teaching them. Wow. wow. You're just not going to get that, like, on a nationwide, you know yeah. what I mean? On a local level, it's crazy. It's just. I think um, I spoke to uh, Tommy on one of our other interviews. Um, he was over for for the gathering recently at Raw Combat, and um, he done an interview. I don't know if you saw the first one of his, and he was talking yeah, how he good. how he niched down um, to focus on just uh, teaching people judo for the purpose of MMA, mm-hmm. and that's how uh, a lot of his business has been created, just by focusing narrowing down that that vision. Yeah. It's interesting you saying, you know, just by looking at the the smaller demographic of locally, it's actually increased your, your business and potential. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, another, it's interesting and, how another, it. another thing, Scott, which I've done yeah. is I've taken the focus of sport main, mainly away from the martial arts okay. with the kids. Yep. So, like, of course, we do, like, we do our competitions, but the main focus is, is for self-defense. And, I mean, I have it drilled into the kids. If you ask them the question... You know, why do you do martial arts? Yeah. First answer is always, oh, to defend myself. Fantastic. And then it's always because I enjoy it and it's fun. Yeah. Well, that's, so that's good. It, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So a saying, Whereas a lot of clubs will Ken focus on the sport it? element. <laughs> <laughs> no? Sorry, sorry, man, sorry. I'm just saying a lot of clubs just focus on the sport element. Right. Yeah. And, uh, whereas our focus is mainly to do with like a life skill for the kids and Sure. And you know, getting the parents on board as well that the kids are learning the life skill, not just sport. Yeah, um, so that kind of helps a lot, I think. That's great. Yeah. So, um, you, you talked about those. So you you've got the um, cultural days, and the, the the schools invite you down to. They invite you to the school, or or um, how, yeah. how, did, how did you first get on board with that? Oh, I, one of the teachers just rang me because um, some of our students were training at the academy. Okay. And uh, she just said, would you be interested in doing an intercultural day? The martial arts would be really good, you know? Yeah. So uh, I said, yeah. I didn't know what it was involved. So I just brought a lot of students down. I took nearly all the equipment I had as a gym. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've even got Kung Fu Panda, a life-size one. I even brought him down. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, it was kind of crazy. Uh, the whole, my, my van was just full of gear. I didn't really need all the gear, but... Yeah. Uh, we were well prepared and uh, we had a great time. Yeah. Um, and we we just we basically taught martial arts to the entire school. Yeah. Uh, they they would the kids in like sixty kids at a time. Yeah. Every twenty minutes. Wow. And uh, we were just going nonstop all day. And then the following day, we done the we done the senior school, which is the older kids. Um, and again, it was just nonstop, and wow. kids loved it. And then like a week later, all my classes. This is when they were quiet. Yeah. Were full. It was crazy. I had to turn people away. Really? So, so when you did those those open days, did you do that free as as a gesture to the oh, school? Oh, free, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't charge for that because okay. again, it's a community thing. Yeah, uh, you got to show. You know what I mean? You you have to show that you're willing to give a little bit as well. Absolutely, yeah. And when I got back in return, like numbers wise of with students was crazy. Really? Yeah. I couldn't. Believe it. All the class completely full within a week. Yeah. Brilliant. I mean, I did a similar thing with uh, some local gyms, um, and I just offered my my services just to. And I had a few mates that run gyms as well, and um, just offered my services to to train their their gym members for free. Yeah. And uh, just by giving that that free thing out there, it, it just made people interested and aware. Yeah. And yeah, same. Likewise, uh, it um, it really helped to to build my classes. That's yeah. great. Um, yeah. My my little boy's just crying again there. <laughs> she's, she's, Stopped. You wait to hear you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, that, that is that is a, that is that is a really good method. I think. I think a, a lot of people could take note from it. Always like, um, oh, you know, oh yeah, but if you do it for free, you know, how are you going to get paid? But it's it's sort of down the road, isn't it? It's sort of you have to you have to give yeah give first before um, you start to get the the business in. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So, obviously, with schools and, and the kids. So, what, what about adults? I mean, what sort of um, appeals to your adults? Well, the adults are after a quick fix. I, I find like it's you know they want fitness. They want to learn to defend themselves really quickly. Yeah. So 
ever since I started teaching the raw combat, that's really, you know, really helped. Right. A, a lot of adults, they don't want to commit to a martial art. Sure. Uh, it's just, you know, the time element where the raw combat really helps there. Mm. They can come in, they can, you know, they feel like after a few weeks they're actually getting somewhere. Um, right. And the fitness level goes way up. Uh, they don't have to buy a uniform. They can train in their normal clothes. And yeah. we mix it up and you know yourself. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. Um, some, like with the jiu-jitsu, it's kind of, you know, Gracie jiu-jitsu or Brazilian jiu-jitsu, it's a newish art in the general scheme of things, you know. You know, with karate and taekwondo are quite popular. Yeah. But people are only getting used to it, you know. Yeah. Um, but people are kind of seeking it out. I, I had heat on Gracie over here in 2011. And we I ran a couple of seminars here, like four seminars for him. Right. And uh, it was packed. Really? We just sold out. It was crazy. Awesome. Like a lot more people knew about him than I thought, you know? Yeah. In our, well, I mean, so, it's a passionate following there for the Gracies, isn't there? There's a, there's yeah, a passionate following. Really yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's great then. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I suppose with the, the explosion of MMA as well, you know, a lot of fighters training Gracie Jiu Jitsu and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in general. And um, it must be, uh, must be good to just, you know, have that, have that following there. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah. So I, I enjoy teaching it. It's kind of um, it's a very humbling art, yep. I find, you know. Yeah. Um, out of all the martial arts that I've studied, it kind of opens your mind up a little bit in a, in a different kind of way. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, when you're being choked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's, it changes everything. <laughs> yeah, and, and the sports-wise, you know, especially for MMA and that, that the like, it's um, it's just built for it, isn't it? It's, uh, you know, it's a devastating art for for that kind of fighting mm. it's great stuff um what i mean i know we spoke earlier you said um you, you started uh teaching was it around in, in the 80s you started teaching yeah yeah and, so, and then um what was it what was it triggered was, you to, to go for that was karate i was teaching okay cool that's like myself I, I started out teaching karate yeah um, i so, was teaching well my instructor at the time after i got my black belt yeah um i had no kind of real interest in opening the club I was just kind of settling in you know uh -huh. the young black belt and uh, one of his clubs became available where one of the other black belt society didn't want to teach so he basically just threw me into the club <laughs> and said there you go here you are <laughs> your first club and I like I was full of students and but I was on my own right. and I'm like ooh <laughs> you know it was a bit crazy I was quite young and uh, but it was good it was good experience and I really enjoyed it so yeah. And it, 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 he kind of threw me in headlong into the teaching, but I enjoy it. Yeah. Good, I suppose good sometimes so you learn fast sometimes when it's like that, isn't it? You, you don't have the uh, comfort not to learn. <laughs> is it? Yeah, it was kind of crazy. And, the, and every adult student I had was older than me at the time, and yeah. everything's just a bit, you know, but yeah. I know I'm older than no, everybody. That's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, I was going to say, so what, what sort of... Um, what was the turning point for you when when you went full time and decided you know look I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, do this as as my my main living? Well, the, well, the turning point was well I had enough students at the time to go full time, but I was working as a in a carpentry business. Right. Um. But then the recession hit. I always wanted to do full time. Um. My current instructor at the time he was full time. Um. So I was you know you'd be thinking about this every day. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to do that. It's like a dream, um, yeah. but the dream never happens when you're too busy working and, sure. you know, the purity of your job. But then when the recession hit, I was like wondering what I'm going to do with my life and, uh, you know, where am I going? There's no work. And I just looked at the numbers of students I had and then I just decided, hey, I'm just going to do this. Sure. What have I got to lose? If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Fantastic. And four years later... It's work. Still going. <laughs> so, <laughs> <Can't> yeah. <stop. laughs> and 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 in in hindsight, with with the recession, you know, with all the doom and gloom about it, it yep. it's a kind of a positive thing that came out of it because I w if someone offered me my old job back, yep. with any amount of money, I wouldn't take it. No. No. no this is you know this is this is the life. This is. This doesn't really feel like a job to be honest. Yeah. Sure. It's nice. <laughs> that you, you tend Tell to my work. wife that. <laughs> I, find, I find you tend to work longer, but you enjoy it more. <laughs> Yeah, my wife says you've got to work to play. Yeah, so. that's it. 
Um, so, I mean, what sort of um, stumbling blocks did you come across? What sort of challenges um, along the way have you had? Or is there anything that sticks out in your mind you might have done differently? Or uh, or you might do differently uh, in the future? Uh, well, I- well, at the start, when when I went full time, uh, the first place I got was way too small. Yeah, <laughs> so that was a big stumbling block. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was tied into a quite a long lease, and uh, but I, I was lucky at my landlord; he, he let me out. So, okay. um, but I realized that it was only after a couple of months. It was just the place was just too small. I was like really worried. So, but uh, we got well, I got sorted there. Um, Basically, the direction of, of the classes initially, you know, when I was teaching, the more like for sport, as I was saying before. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to kind of bring like a comprehensive bullyproof program into the whole system. Right. To all, to everything I teach the kids, whether it's the Korean martial arts or the Jiu Jitsu, they all have the same bullyproof program incorporated into it. Right. And That's great. Unless the kids know their bullyproof program, Yep. They won't progress on their belts. It doesn't matter how good their martial arts are. So sure. It's intertwined. Now, it's taken a few years to get everyone on board and to kind of understand the concept behind it because, you know, it's just not the done thing in other, in other clubs. It's more, sure. you know, get trophies, get medals, whatever. Yeah. But here, we're more about, you know, the kids being bullyproof and teaching them, you know, certain certain things to, well, to learn off and, I you know. So. I think that's great, Ken. I mean, um, it, it's just the evolution of teaching and, and what, what we do, you know, as martial arts. I think um, it's good, you know, you, it, like you say, some some uh, instructors and that just focus on the sport and it's just the medals and and um, mm-hmm. and even the ones that sort of uh, focus on the, the, the self-defence side. Like you said, I just think um, they need to bring it in up to date like you're doing with the bullyproof thing and um, just make sure that people are aware of why they're doing it and what the purposes are. And yeah. Just uh, just modernising it a bit is is a good thing. Just treat the art as a life skill as opposed to just a pastime. Sure. sure. So it's just about re-educating people, and yeah. you know, they're looking on it as a, as a, as a life skill, and especially for parents and their kids. Yep. They'll like I, I, have a, I have a very good kind of um, you know when the kids are coming to class, they very rarely miss their classes sure. unless it's a really really good reason. Yeah. In early days. Yeah, they'd miss their classes because hey, it's football or something, you know, yep. come up. And now the parents are getting the message, hey, the kids should be going to their class. They need this, it's, you know. So now the classes are they're just full all the time, unless we have some crazy weather or something. Yeah, you know, but the kids are all they always turn up. Classes are always full, you know. Kids just and the kids love what they do. So I mean, and I'm not too strict with the kids either. So I'm not like this hardcore yep. kind of really, you know crazy. I'm pretty laid back, yeah. uh, and 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 they give that back to you as well when you when you treat them like that, you know. Sure. So well, that's great. They all follow their peers. That's cool. So I mean, I, I usually the other guys I've interviewed is like you know you've got you've got opportunity to go back five ten years, put your arm around young Ken, <laughs> and sort of give him <laughs> some advice. Um, what what would you uh, what would you give like top tips to or, or to anyone who's looking to make that leap? You know, like maybe like yourself was, um, you know, had a full time job and their uh, part time uh, teaching was looking good. What, yeah. What, what what top tips would you give that sort of person? Well, before you get started, um, the one thing I found from a few people that are, that have gone the same route as me and hasn't worked out for them, yep. you got to build your student base first. Right. So get the numbers up. Get yep. enough people where you can run a full time place. Yep. Even if you're not making a profit at the start, but once you're paying your bills, that's the main thing. Just sure. get the numbers. Don't go, you know, with your twenty students and open a full time place where you need a hundred students and think you're gonna get them. Sure. You did you didn't have them before in your local hall, so you have to get them first. So yep. student base is key. Um uh, equipment not so necessary at the start. You know, keep reinvesting, and if you have a full-time place, just keep reinvesting and get your gym up to speed and have it looking nice. You know, it's all about presentation. Cool. And if you can, I have a reception area which has worked out really great. I didn't have it in the first place, but now in the, in the place I'm in now, we have a great reception area where parents can chill out. There's a couch, they can sit down, watch TV. You know, internet access, little things like that. It, it means parents are going, oh, it's comfortable for me. 
that's, you know that's nice because I, I think as a I, I remember from teaching I, I no longer teach kids but uh, the um, just just as I wanted to focus on the adult side as in that niching down but um, I remember not that I hate kids or anything <laughs> but as a, um, I remember from teaching the, the kids classes that quite often it would be disruptive because the parents aren't comfortable you know they're shuffling around an old chair and they're you know coming in reading a newspaper and it's like it disrupts the class a lot so that's that's a nice tip i like that so uh, just make sure there's a, yeah. a comfortable area yeah i put like a big window in so yep. there's no kind of noise and they can get on their phones and do what they want yeah in, in the original place in the small room that i had originally they were just sitting in in the room and yeah. they were more noisy than the kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah. So, and the odd time you you get like a two year old that's sitting on the sidelines will just run into the class. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> wants to join in, and it's yeah. kind of funny, but uh, so, so, you know, yeah. get beyond the joke after a few weeks where you're just picking up two year olds and return them to yeah. their parents. And it's always at the so. important point you're trying to make in the class, isn't it? As well. <laughs> But then these kids are easy to teach when they're old enough. <laughs> they sure. know everything. Sure. Um, but yeah, there, there's some pretty good tips there. Um, more will be, again, community stuff. Yep. Get, before you go full time, let the community know what you're thinking about doing. Do you have a support? Open days. Um, free seminars are great. Like, yeah. You know, just offer free self defense seminars. Just, just giving that, yeah. giving something out for free. Yeah. Yeah. Down to the local police, talk to them, tell them what you're doing. They, they have a lot of community-based schemes. Right. Um, they they contact me a lot to do security seminars where they they have these home community, home security seminars. Right. And they set them up in different counties. Sure. And I, the last one I went to in Navan, um, we set up a raw combat stand. And and like it was over like a thousand people came through that day. That's so you great. just get, basically get to talk about self-protection tips stuff like that and then there's other there's other stalls there as well they're doing like home security alarms yep. all different kinds of stuff so but once they're when they ask you to go like you just do it yeah because well, you, you know you're not getting paid no. but you know you're getting out there you're getting your name out there is that you, you think it's uh well, i say a thousand people come through i mean how many of those um sort of normally come back down to your gym and then want to try out a lesson you're always going to get a couple of calls and yep. you know even if you only get five or six it's still fire, you know, for your day's work that you put in. Yep. You've got five or six. Exactly, and and, and your name gets yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. And but then you've got a lot of other people who know about you. Yeah. So if they if they decide to do something or or tell a friend or whatever, you know. Yep. Then that I, word of mouth spreads and helps helps promote you. Yeah, it's it's the referrals are better. You're basically your best way of of advertising. You know, I've tried over the years. I've tried a lot of different different things. Yep. Flyers, uh, TV kind of campaigns in local shops. You know they have the TVs up. Yep. You know, um, different things like that, but mainly community based stuff. It shouldn't really cost you anything. No. You know what I mean? Just your time. Great. And your your time is what you're willing to put into your into your uh, academy, and and that that's all you need to do. Really, you know, right. you don't need to spend a lot of money. That's that's, that's great advice. Yeah. I mean, uh... which won't happen when you start now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And don't and don't start up next door to you. <laughs> so, um, Club wars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, thanks for that. That's, that's some great tips. I think uh, that's some real sound advice that um, you know our, our viewers could um, re really take home with. Um, what, what, so what's happening with uh, Golden Tiger Academy at the moment? What's uh, what's what's next on the books? What's going on? Well, I have this kind of grand plan to get this bullyproof program into school right um, you know we only tip on schools when we do like intercultural day and things like that right. we're getting in there like once a year but i'd like to get a comprehensive program in on a regular basis okay just like they have basketball once a week or you know football once a week yep. i'd like to get the martial arts strong bullyproof program working in school That'd now it's a tricky mind deal at the moment because you know you mentioned martial arts as a part of their curriculum, and it's kind of they think of it as combative, as yep. opposed to you know. So I'm I'm approaching from the bullyproof aspect that sure. you know there's a lot you can teach kids without having to punch each other in the face. So yeah, you know, <laughs> but it's it, it's just a case of getting that message across, but slowly working. Sure. And once it kicks off, well then you know, but it's just taking time. 
Oh, oh well, best okay. luck. Best luck with that, man. I hope that works out good. I mean, um, like you say, it's, it's hard to get around that stigma sometimes. I remember yeah. speaking to some uh, groups and stuff, and they go, oh, martial arts, isn't that beating people up? <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, no, no, that's great. That's great stuff, man. I, I hope uh, I hope you can, uh, you know, literally make that a, a part of the curriculum. That'd be great. Yeah, in time, it'll happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks very much, Ken. I'll, I'll, I'll sort of... Uh, Wrap that up there. But, no um, problem. Where, where, where can where can we find you if um, if uh, we want to come and visit your academy? What, is there a website sure. or? Yeah, uh, www.goldentigeracademy.com. Okay. And um, we're in County Mead, which we're um, Dublin and County Mead. We're basically ten minutes from Dublin city. Fantastic. Okay. By jet plane. <laughs> cool. <laughs> By jet plane. <laughs> So thanks very much, Ken, and uh, no. I'll catch up with you soon, mate. Yeah, sure. Thank you, bud. All right. Cheers, man. Bye. Bye.